Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Good to see you here for Midday Prayer on this Friday. Um, a week from now, it'll be Christmas Eve. Hard to kind of even believe that that's a reality, right? It's been a long time coming, and seems like it's also got here as fast as it possibly could. Um, we've got people an uh, opportunity to gather up with us today as we are uh, uh, getting ready. I want to make sure that uh, we got volume and that the technology is working well. It looks like it is to me, but just want to make sure. Yep, looks like it's good. So we'll get started. Let me know you're here, and um, we will um, enjoy our time together for midday prayer. Um, so as we begin, we center ourselves as we uh, breathe in the breath of God and we breathe out our cares and our concerns. And we breathe in the love of God. And we breathe out our doubts and our despairs. And we breathe in the love of God. And we breathe out our fears and our frustrations. So our reading today is actually the first lesson from Sunday or for this coming Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Advent, comes from the prophet Micah, uh, the fifth chapter beginning at the second verse and through the fifth verse. The prophet writes, But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. So we hear that text, um, and uh, uh, you know you can't really hear uh, the word Bethlehem, even the reference to the town of Bethlehem, without thinking about that wonderful Christmas carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Um, and uh, it is the place God has uh, decided the new king will come. Now, Micah is writing to God's people when they are living through some pretty challenging times, to say the least. Um, they, they're being attacked uh, on all ends by... Um, by their neighbors. They um, are probably inviting in within themselves as well. Um, and they are, they're looking for and have always been promised that there will be this eternal king from the line of David who shall reign forever. And so I think they're looking for that, that, that promise um, to be a reality. And how surprising it is that it seems like God is picking the most unlikely of towns from which that king will come. You know, Bethlehem is just this little speck outside of, um, outside of Jerusalem. It's just this little small town. There's not much to it. Um, you know, it's not probably considered the, the place where kings would be born. Um, at least if it were up to God's people's mind and, and, and to our mind. Um, it's a humble little place. There's no uh, pageantry. There's nothing. There's just this notion that in the lowliest of places, God will raise up this new king. And it will be a king who will rule forever and ever, a king who will feed God's flock, a king who will bring about peace. And uh, as we were talking about this particular text in, this morning at our men's group, you know, it, it became apparent that, you know, being fed and, 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 
in getting and receiving God's peace is something we all look forward to. It, it's a it's something that we all hope for. I think not only just in this Christmas season, but really throughout the entire year, but particularly in this season of Christmas, um, we look for those things to be gifted to us, to be made known to us, to be um, kind of the guiding lights for us. Um, and sometimes among the the stuff of the world, we um, we might not be able to see God's peace and God's hope coming out of that little town of Bethlehem. Um, but I think if we just step back and take a breath and pause, one of the benefits of Advent is it gives us time to pause. I think maybe God will speak to us again and will show us that from those humble beginnings, God's work will be done. God will deliver that hope and will deliver that peace. So therefore, let us rejoice in that little town of Bethlehem. Let us hold, kind of cling to that promise um, in the days ahead in this next week uh, as we prepare for um, our Christmas celebrations um, in whatever way that we're going to be able to celebrate those and hold those celebrations themselves. So our folks from Camp Hill are going to sing for us, and then we'll get back together to pray. So enjoy them as they take the Bethlehem Highway. That's a really happy little song. I think it will give you some um, hope and peace and good cheer on this Friday in Advent. So here are friends from Camp Hill, and I'll be back with you in just a moment. Remind us that there is hope on the Bethlehem Highway, uh, and we will journey there as God's people gather together in this fourth, at the end of this third, into this fourth week of Advent, as we then gather, as we are able, and give thanks and celebrate the birth of that King that has been prophesied. And so now let us gather together as God's people and pray. God, our hope. We thank you for the gift of prophecy, for the gift of story, for the gift of fulfillment. All those things that are such a part of this season of Advent and also such a part of our celebrations of Christmas. That time when you showed the world how far you would go to be among us 
and to teach us and to show us that we have hope. Gracious God, send your healing presence to those in our lives that we know of, those that are on our prayer list, those that are in our hearts. Especially today, God, we pray for Martin Falls, Carolyn, Xiao Chen, Betty Roop, Adrian Sanchez, Lynn Shebley, Kathy, Margaret Falkamer, Laura Dareth, Terry, Ben Lehman, Howard Fales, Rebecca Neal, Jeff, Glenn Hardesty, Connie and Herb Koss, McKenna Day, Barbara Dareth, Jane Cox, Lauren Mueller, Ruth Gossner, Tracy Strimple, Woody and Charlotte Wallach, Sabrina, Delvia Goodrich, Sean Fitzsimmons, Mia Zinn and family, Donna, Dave, and Nancy, Lynn Smith, Linda Heitzelman, and those that we name aloud are silently in our hearts at this time. Ryan, Pastor Kelly, Pastor Charlene, Pastor Jody, Pastor Kim, Gracious God, your son gives us hope through death. In our baptism, we are connected to Jesus in his life and in his death and in his resurrection. And today, God, we pray that the, the promise of our own resurrection, the promise of a future that includes our being in your presence forever in a time where death will be no more, we we ask that that hope be showered upon those who are grieving and would console their hearts. Specifically, God, we are praying for um, Nancy Louie and um, uh, her family at the death of her cousin Artie, and for the family and friends of Grant Dodeline on his death, and for all those who are grieving. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for the gift of love and hope and promise that comes to us in the most unusual and unexpected way. We are so very blessed. And now, God, we join together as your people and we pray the words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, as God's people, we breathe in the breath of God and we breathe out our tension and our turmoil. And we breathe in the love of God. And we breathe out our haste and our apprehensions. And we breathe in the life of God. And we breathe out our work and our worry. And now until I, Pastor Tamika will be with you on Monday. I'll be with you on uh, Wednesday and Friday of next week. And until then, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. See you at worship on Sunday, either in person or on the live stream. And um, next week for midday prayer. Have a great weekend. God bless.